Ladies and gentlemen, we were hoping to be joined at this point by Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger, the founder of R20, who, when he was governor of California, decided that maybe the greatest strength for change lay with the local councils, with states and provinces, and he founded Regions 20, uh, which is now a growing movement around the world. However, unfortunately, he was unable to join us. He has sent uh, a video, which we're going to play. I was arguing that we should finish with this video, and then we could say that he had been the terminator of the program. Um, but unfortunately, I was voted down. So I still got the joke in, but now here's the video. Hello, everybody, and I want to say thank you to President Halan for having the wisdom and the vision to host this summit of conscience and call all of these amazing minds together to march as one towards a sustainable energy future. Now, I'm sorry I couldn't be with you today, but I am on a promotional tour right now, and that's why I couldn't make it. But when I saw the list of all of these leaders of all the different religions who were there today, I have to admit that I was a little starstruck. Because I've spoken to a lot of people. I've spoken to scholars and academics about the science of climate change. I've spoken to bankers and investors about the economic impact. I've spoken to political leaders and other leaders about the policy. And I have spoken to military leaders and diplomats about national security. But this gathering is very special. It is unique. This summit appeals to the people's morality and it speaks directly to their hearts. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have to tell you how important your mission is to our environmental movement. It is a great and powerful goal to win over the people's minds and their hearts. Now, I've starred, of course, in a lot of science fiction movies, as you know, but let me tell you something. Climate change is not science fiction. This is a battle in the real world. It is impacting us right now. This year alone, for instance, we will dump 40 billion tons of carbon emissions into our atmosphere. The World Health Organization says that air pollution causes over 7 million premature deaths every year. And all over the world, you can see flooding, and monster storms, droughts, and wildfires that are completely out of control. This is bigger than any movie. This is the challenge of our time. And it is our responsibility to leave this world a better place than we found it. But right now, we are failing future generations. And a lot of it has to do with our failure to communicate, I have to be very honest with you. Communicating with the mass, with the people. I mean, we have told them over and over again about our climate change and about global warming. And we should be concerned with rising temperatures. And we should be concerned with the rising sea levels and be melting ice caps and all of those things. But those are things that will happen down the line. But most people are concerned with what is happening right now. People worry about the jobs and health care and national security. They worry about putting food on the table for their families. They worry about their survival. And you know something? They should be concerned with their survival. Because as I said earlier, Seven million people die every year because of our pollution. So they should be concerned with their survival. We know that a green economy will be much better. A green economy is a growing and sustainable economy. It creates jobs, it provides health care and financial security, and it cleans our air, and it saves lives. So the bottom line is we can do better, and we must do better. So I challenge you to go home after this meeting is over, after this conference is over, go home to your congregations, to your churches, to your mosques, to your temples and your followers, and inspire them to fight for a clean energy future. And that's why this summit of conscience is so important. And that is why I'm glad that Pope Francis is also having an event today. When I read the Pope's encyclical, I was struck by the story of St. Francis of Assisi who called the smallest creatures brothers and sisters and prayed with the flowers. He celebrated all that our planet had to offer and preached for its protection. Now just imagine if we inspired the world to embrace just a fraction of St. Francis's love for the environment. And we can. And you can lead the way. 
Now remember, the greatest movements in human history, from the civil rights movement, to the anti-apartheid movement, to the Indian independence movement, did not start in the halls of power, did not start in the capitals. No, it started in the grassroots with ordinary people. And the same will be true with our movement, if we speak to the people's hearts and their souls. Now, we have 133 days until the leaders of the world gather here for the 2015 Paris Climate Change Conference. And one thing we know is that they have a tremendous weight that they must lift off the world. And we also know that they can't lift it by themselves. We must help them because together we can lift it. We must do everything that we can to communicate better and to preach and to inspire people to join our crusade. Now, when I was a young boy in Austria, I have to admit that I wasn't always on my best behavior when my parents brought me to church. I hope that you can forgive me for that. But any time the priest talked about Noah's Ark, I hung on to every word. I loved the story of Noah building a ship large enough to save every species on earth. That epic mission captured every fiber of my imagination. And today, we have an epic mission of our own. Our mission doesn't call for building a ship, but ladies and gentlemen, our mission calls for building a bridge. We must build a bridge to the people to invite, to join our movement, to invite them all to enjoy our movement for a healthy and for a sustainable energy future. We must speak to their minds and capture their hearts. We must inspire the world to consult its conscience and to demand a better way. So once again, I want to say thank you very much, President Halan, for your great environmental work. And thank you, Foreign Minister Fabius, and thank you, Nicholas Hulot, for your great leadership. You are a climate champion, and the President is lucky to have you on his side. So thank you very much.